Hello everyone, my name is Mark Lewis Ran from Base and Science 3A and in this video we are going to discuss about the module 1 lesson 2 which is all about ICT pedagogy integration in mathematics and science learning plans. So these are our learning outcomes. So we are going to discuss the salient features of the K-12 curriculum requiring ICT pedagogy integration skills. Next one is analyze the learning competencies of every year level according to the field of specialization of the pre-service teachers. And last one is review some units in the curriculum guide with focus on the development of 21st century skills. So teaching has always been a challenging profession since knowledge has been precipitously expanding and essential skills incessantly increasing and changing. With these challenges, teachers need to engage educational technologies to assess them in teaching and learning process. So we all know that we are already now in the 21st century and we can observe that even the small kids already know how to use cell phones, how to use computers, and many more technologies. So as a 21st century teacher, we should also know how to learn, how to engage the, these um, educational technologies in our teaching and learning process. So integrating technology in instruction. There are various educators and researchers provided the following concepts and principles about integrating technology in instruction. So the first one is John Pisapia of 1994. So for him, integrating technology in teaching means the use of learning technologies to introduce, reinforce, implement, and extend skills. So for example, if the teacher tells a student to read a book without any preparation for follow-up activities, that puts the book in a pedagogical context, but the book is not integrated. So how can we say that the book is not in integrated? It is because um, the teacher um, didn't give follow-up activities for his or her students after reading the book. So kinakailangan um, kagaya sa, ano, sa subject natin na cellular and molecular biology. So, kapag si Sir Hidalgo nagbigay sa atin ng mga reading materials, nagbibigay din siya ng mga review questions na kailangan nating sagutan. So, so para dito natetest ang ating understanding kung meron nga ba tayong natutuhan or, or mas, lalo, mas naintindihan ba natin ang ating binasa. So, kapag nagbibigay si teacher ng mga follow-up activities or mga review questions after basahin yung reading materials then we can say that the book is integrated so another example is in the same way if the teachers uses the computer to reward the students by allowing them to play a game the computer is not integrated so how can we say that the computer is not integrated it is because ginamit ni teacher yung computer na i-reward sa students para gamitin sa paglalaro ng games which is we all know that game is not a which we all know that game is not for learning so as we te as a teacher kinakailangan na gamitin natin yung computer for educational purposes um pwede naman natin gamitin yung computer para makapag-search sa internet about sa mga topics na diniscuss or manood ng mga YouTube videos that are also related to the topic. So, in this way, the computer is integrated. So, also, according to him, integrating technology in the curricula can mean different things. So, computer science courses, computer-assessed instruction, and or computer-enhanced or enriched instruction. Second is matching software with basic skill competencies. And the third one is keyboarding with word processing followed up with presentation tools. So technology integration is really helpful, especially in science courses, because in science, 
it is a difficult course. The lessons are hard to understand and there are also a lot of laboratories and experiments. So like for example, when the topic is all about the parts of the cell, so by using, so through ICT integ integration and by using computers in the discussion, um, mas madaling maintindihan ng mga estudyante kung ano nga ba ang cell, ano ang parts ng cell, at kung ano ang functions na mga iba't ibang parte ng cell. So, this is all through ICT integration. So, now let's move on to the International Society for Technology in Education or ISTE. So, according for them, ICT integration of technology is achieved when students are able to select technology tools to help them obtain information in a timely manner, analyze and synthesize the information, and present it professionally. So, if, if we are going to relate it in our online class, the technology tool na mostly ginagamit ni teacher ngayon ay yung Google Classroom at Google Meet. So, sa Google Classroom, doon binibigay ng ating teacher yung mga reading materials as well as activities na ating sasagutan. At sa Google Meet naman, um, mahalaga ito para sa mga teachers at sa ating mga estudyante kasi pwede tayo dito makapag-report, makapag-present at makapag-discuss ng ating mga iba't ibang topic during the synchronous class. Also, according for them, um, the technology should become an integral part of how the classroom functions as accessible as all other classroom. So, sabi ko nga sa example ko kanina the, na in this time of uh, pandemic which we are conducting our online, our online class, mostly na ginagamit ng mga teacher that serves as our classroom is the Google Classroom. Kasi very convenient siya at maraming features niya na pwede kang magbigay ng mga assignments, activities, mag-attach ka dun ng mga recorded discussion at marami pang iba. Yung Google Classroom parang um, it serves as our classroom in, that, in this time of online class na dito nagbibigay yung mga, ng mga activities si teacher at dito din tayo nagpapasa ng ating mga activities as a student. And now, let's move on to Margale Margaret Lloyd of 2005. So, according for her, according to her, ICT integration encompasses an integral part of broader curriculum reforms which include both infrastructural as well as, as, well as pedagogical consideration that are changing not only how learning occurred but what is learned. So, ICT integration is really helpful talaga sa mga teachers and students dahil iba ang pagkatuto ng mga estudyante noon at ngayon. So, for example, in the traditional way of teaching, the students are just merely reading books and using their imagination. So, kunti lang ang natututunan ng mga estudyante. But with the help of ICT integration, the teacher can now give in educational videos from YouTube and simulation links that were that were the students can navigate for them to have a comprehensive understanding about their topic. So according to now let's move on to Kiyun Wang and Wilet Wu of 2007. So according to them integrating information and communication or ICT into teaching and learning is a growing area that has attracted many educators' efforts in recent years. Based on the scope of content covered, ICT integration can help in different areas, curriculum, topic, and lesson. So just like what I've said well, a while ago na kung that is a traditional way of teaching na gumagamit tayo ng mga chalkboards, manila papers, in our discussion, um, but with the help of ICT integration, the teacher can now use laptops, projectors in discussing. And when we use laptops and projectors, it is um, less hassle and not time consuming. 
So, and in the topic and lesson naman, the teacher can provide educational video links and simulation to the students para hindi lang sila puro basa which is boring. So, kinakailangan na learning must be fun. So, kailangan natin gumamit ng mga educational technologies sa pagdidiscuss ng ating mga topics at lessons sa classroom. So, let's now move to Bernard Bahati of 2010. So, according to him, the process of integrating ICT in teaching and learning has to be done at both pedagogical and technological levels with much emphasis put on pedagogy. ICT integration into teaching and learning has to be underpinned by sound pedagogical principles. So, sinasabi dito na kahit malaking tulong ang ICT integration sa pagkatuto ng mga students, kinakailangan na marunong pa din at prepared <coughs> si teacher sa kung ano ang kanyang itinuturo. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng mga estudyante after makapanood ng mga video links ay maintindihan ka kaagad. So, syempre, meron din mga estudyante na um, merong mga katanungan mga katanungan after makapanood ng mga videos na hindi nila naintindihan masyado. So, as a teacher, kinakailangan na alam mo pa rin yung, yung lesson na yun at handa kang, at handa kang masagutan kung ano ang kanila mga kasagutan after nilang mapanood yung video. So, kinakailangan hindi, hindi masapawan ng ICT yung role ni teacher as a teacher. And lastly is UNESCO of 2005. So according to UNESCO, ICT integration is not merely mastering the hardware and software skills. So teachers need to realize how to organize the classroom to structure the learning task so that ICT resources become automatic and natural response to the requirements for learning environments in the same way as teacher use markers and whiteboards in the classroom. So as a teachers, as a teacher we should know how to use this technology that we will be utilizing in teaching. Like for example, um, as a teacher we should know how to use laptops in our discussion, um, the, how to use the projector, kung paano i-connect yung projector sa laptop, um, how to adjust yung sizes na mga context kapag nai-project na sa sa an, an, <coughs> kapag nai-project na sa may ating blackboard at kung sa online class naman kinakailangan na as a teacher we should know how to use ang mga applications such as the Google Classroom how to manage the Google Classroom and also how to use the Google Meet kasi baka ano kapag baka Kanina ka pa salita ng salita, nagdi-discuss ka na, tapos nakamute pa pala yung, yung mic mo, so useless pa din. At kung papaano mag-open cam at mag-share screen para, para makapag-discuss. At pati na rin mag-record ng discussion. discussion. So kapag alam ni teacher kung paano gamitin ang mga technology, mas mapapadali yung discussion at nagkakaroon ng, ng mas comprehensive understanding ang mga estudyante. <clears throat> so now, let's move on to the information and communication technology. Specifically, there is a need to determine the ICTs that are available for mathematics and science education. The following are the definitions from various literature. So the first one is Morrison of 2005. So, according to him, ICT includes all the full range of computer hardware, computer software, and telecommunication facilities. It includes the local area networks and wide area network that will allow computer systems and people to communicate with each other. It includes computerized machinery and computerized robots. So, according to him, ICT includes digital cameras, computer games, CDs and DVDs, cell phones, telephones, telecommunication satellites, and fiber optics. The next one is TNU of 2009. 
So according to him, ICT is a diverse set of technological tools and resources used, used to communicate, create, disseminate, store, and manage information. So these technologies include hardware devices such as computers and laptops, the software applications such as Microsoft Word and Microsoft Presentation, the internet connectivity, broadcasting technologies, and telephony. The next one is UNESCO of 2020. So according to them, ICT is a diverse set of technological tools and resources used to transmit, store, create, share, or exchange information. So this includes the computer, the internet, website blogs, and emails. And then <clears throat> live broadcasting technologies such as radio, television, and webcasting. And recorded broadcasting technologies such as podcasting, audio and video players, and storage devices. UNESCO also defined it as a scientific, technological, and engineering discipline and management technique used and handling information, its application and association with social, economic, and cultural matters. <clears throat> so the last one is Ratiswari of 2018. So according to him, many people recognize ICTs as catalyst for change. Change in working conditions, handling and exchanging information, teaching methods, learning approaches, teaching in, in, in and in accessing information communication technologies. ICT is important in the classroom for giving students opportunities to learn and apply the required 21st century skills. So ICT improves teaching and learning and its importance for teacher, teachers in performing role of creators of pedagogical environments. ICT helps teachers to present his or her teaching attractively and enables to learn at any level of educational program. So the next topic is about ICT integration frameworks in mathematics and science education learning plans which will be discussed by one of my group mates. So thank you for listening and again I am Mark Lewis Ron from Base and Science 3A. Thank you so much.